Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the concept of the Akhirah starts on the very position that one calls himself a believer. Faith is not by chance. Belief in Allah and the unseen is not by chance. The Akhirat and the life of the hereafter is something that is the greatest of value that no one can buy. We can only receive this from Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's make dua inshallah and start. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak fi adal jalali wal ikram. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa shafi'ina wa habibina wa maulana Muhammad wa barik wa sallam. Allahumma rabbana yassir wa la tu'asir wa tamam bil khayr wa bika nasta'in ya fattah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alimu al-hakim. Allahumma rabbana zinna ilma nafi'ah. وعمل متقبلة ورزق واسع وشفاء من كل داء سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي ما شاء الله we were speaking on the importance of that day, Qiyamah, and in relationship to the event that comes after Qiyamah, the Sirat. And after the Sirat, the destination can be either Jahannam or Jannah. And we have reached the discussion at the point of Jahannam, the description of Jahannam, and the conditions that one will face in Jahannam. We had mentioned that Jahannam in itself had had in itself a formation. It has a shape. It has different stages in Jahannam. Seven different degrees in Jahannam. Different levels in Jahannam. Extreme heat. And we have also described that there is also extreme cold. And in Jahannam itself, it has a time that portions of it will eat out from the other portion. And we say that it asks Allah for two breaths of air and out of that breath of air one is extreme heat and one is extreme cold this is the jahannam in its first instant of its intensity of hot and its intensity in being cold jahannam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as the abode for those whom is to be punished and Allah describes the place of punishment. The punishment and its place is horrific. It is not something that we always like to describe. And when it is described, it also brings fear into the heart. And it's an important thing that it brings fear to the heart. Because it's supposed to make a change in the heart of a believer. Subhanallah. Sahabas radiallahu ta'ala anhum, we are told of their yaqeen and their ability in their iman of recognizing Jannah and Jahannam. That if either Jannah, Paradise or Jahannam was brought before them, their yakin and reality and belief in it wouldn't shake. It wouldn't go up nor down because they had firm conviction of its existence. And therefore, in that conviction of its existence and its presence as is, their lives became straightened out of it. So for a believer, when we would hear about Jahannam, we would hear about the hellfire, it is a means of restriction. It is a means of safeguarding us, as we are told by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ad-dunya jannatul kafir, it is a Paradise for the unbelievers, but a sijnul lil mu'min. So a sijnul lil mu'min or jannatul kafir. That is a prison for us. Because when we hear about jahannam, we think of what it's restricted with. We are told by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the pathway towards paradise is disguised with difficulties, challenges and hardship. 
But the pathway of Jahannam is decorated with luxuries, comforts, ease, things that will distract you towards the path of Jannah. Things that makes you feel that this world is everything. That is the direction of Jahannam. So Jahannam is decorated with these things. But that's in this world. But the reality of Jahannam is not what the beauty of this world is. Not what it is. It is only a distraction. So once we see this life and think of its comfort, we think, well, like, this is what life is supposed to be. And sometimes as believers, you think if Allah does not grant us the comforts of this world, that we are really what? Deprived of Allah's mercy. That we are really deprived of the comforts that is duly deserving to us. So how could other people have this, these comforts and we don't have it? What is the comfort of a believer? What is the comfort of a believer? One, he has iman in Allah. Two, he has conviction that Allah has given him barakah in his time so he can do ibadat and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given him the guidance and iman so that he can perform his ibadat and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has guided him upon the path of righteousness that he can make those choices based on the ability of taqwa and piety. These are the qualities that makes a believer favor in this world. But for someone who would deny the worship of Allah, someone who would be doing things contrary to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are deprived of Jannah. They are deprived of the benefits of this world for the Akhirat. And we don't want to be deprived of the benefits of this world for the Akhirat, the Paradise. Whatever we are given in this world, it must be beneficial for us for the life of the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran, Ayats after ayats on the description of Jahannam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given message, his message and given this message to his companions. And these messages are stored in the books of a hadith for us to recognize the importance of the warning of Jahannam. The warning of Jahannam. That it is not something to play with in this world. That if you would see a brother who is... Someone who would iman, someone who you recognize as a Muslim and he's heading towards the place to consume alcohol, a rum shop as you would say. What do we do? Would we allow him to enter into the shop? Or we just watch him and just drive and say, see, that look at what kind of Muslim he is and continue driving. What is the condition? What is the fear? What is the worry for that person? Knowing that this is a person whom Allah has given Iman and yet he is found in such a condition. What is the position of someone who would do this? And we would come to the sayings of Rasulullah for someone who would be doing such an action, what will be their condition? So we are told by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Concerning the description of Jahannam. That it was mentioned from our last session that the fuel of Jahannam is Kuduhannasu wal Hijara. That the fuel of the fire of hell, on page 52, that the fuel of the fire of hell is man and stone. This is what we are told, that this is what burns and causes the fire of Jahannam to be fueled. But bigger than even that, the sun is placed in Jahannam. The sun is placed in Jahannam. And it is like a small pebble in Jahannam. It has no significant in heat. Yet the heat of the sun to us, if it even, even comes close to the earth, everything is destroyed. This is the condition of the heat of Jahannam, even if you compare it with the sun of this world. We cannot even stand the heat of the sun. And we are told, as we mentioned, that Jahannam is a physical form. That the Jahannam has a neck. It has a form. It has a, it has a strength, a power. It has a motion. It is leashed. It is leashed. It, it's hold on by reins. Angels that hold on these reins, there are 70,000 reins, 70,000 angels 
that hole is, you know, when you have a little bad pit bull dog, as you would say, a little small little dog on the road, and you put a little leash on him, and he starts to bark at someone, it runs, and the owner has to actually put down some little force to hold on this little dog. This is just a little what? Dog. But Jahannam, 70,000 leashes, and each of these leashes, there are 70,000 angels holding it. The Jahannam. Not that they are transporting Jahannam, they are holding Jahannam, keeping it at bay. Because Allah had created it with such a destructive way that anything comes in line for destruction, it goes in there, it is destroyed. This is the Jahannam. So it is told to us concerning this Jahannam that it has pillars in Jahannam and the angels that control and hold on this Jahannam and there are angels that stand above Jahannam and they are 19. Quran tells us that alayha tisa ashara that there are 19 angels over Jahannam. Surah 74, verse number 30. Allah SWT says, how many angels control Jahannam? Page 53. Then he continues and tells us of when it is, it sees the people for the place from a far off distance. You know, like a bad dog watching someone and it drags off. Jahannam seeing the people coming towards the direction ready and waiting to grab. It's ready and waiting with rage just to grab and pull into the fire of hell. It has these hooks that will grab and pull them into Jahannam. So Jahannam is just like a rage. It's in rage and it's seeing those who are entering, those who are to come its way. And it's only waiting for that opportunity to clasp, take that hook, take a grasp. And in Jahannam, they would fall. So Jahannam in this rage, turned towards them in such a rage that it could bring utter destruction to that individual. Ibn Kathir states that Jahannam will pick out evil doers from the resurrection surface on that day. Just as animals pick up food of grains, a chicken will pick up grains, Jahannam will be operating at this speed, grasping at the people of Jahannam, the Jahannamis. From the above verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells and refers to us and tells us here that those who are in the habit of hoarding wealth, Hazrat Qatada radiallahu ta'ala writes in his commentary of this ayat of those who would hoard wealth, one who fails to make any difference between what is permitted and what is prohibited and does not spend in spite of the clear order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is most unfortunate. Abdullah ibn Hakim radiallahu ta'ala never zipped his and never zipped his purse or his, his wallet or his, or his bag or his sack and left it open for the fear of this verse. For the fear of this verse, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take into account for those who will hoard. Who will hoard their wealth. And that is, a, that is a stern and the fear that the Sahaba have when it comes to what? Thinking of hoarding. A person asks for something, sometimes you think, you know, you're searching in your money, whether I should, in your pocket, or 10, 15, or 20 dollars, and 5 dollars, 10 dollar bills. Yeah, watching your pocket, but you could pull out a 1 dollar from the 5, 10, and 1 dollar. You know, you can know which one is one dollar and pull it out. <laughs> this technique, subhanallah, the hand even could see. In this condition, you know, it tells of our weakness. Not that we're not given. Not that we shouldn't give in a proportionate figure. But we should give with the tawakkul that Allah continues to provide. That is the difference. One is to give. And one is to give with the intention and the, 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 the know-how and, and the firm yakin that Allah continues to provide. No matter how much you give, even if you're still giving that one dollar, give it not with that kind of you know, feeling on searching out, but give it with the intention that Allah will provide more. So that the mentality will change. The attitude will change. 
our behavior will change and we will never fall in care in, in this category at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us on that. Sahabas, what they mentioned, they said he, he feared so much that he never turned back that bag or tied that sack anymore. He always left it open. Perhaps by tying that, it will so, show a sign of stinginess. A sign that he's hoarding. And out of this fear, he never kept it closed. O son of Adam, you hear the truth and the disapprovals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yet still go on hoarding wealth and property. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in this ayat of Quran that this is what we will do. The messengers of Allah said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of resurrection, men will be brought like children in a state of disgrace to Allah. Then Al Almighty will ask him, did I not give you wealth and property, cattle and other favors? How did you thank me? Thereupon they would say, my Rob, my Allah, I collected wealth and property, multiplied it in abundantly and left behind more than I had. Thus let me bring all that now. In short, that person had sent nothing ahead in the form of virtues. Hence, he will be hurled into Jahannam, the fire of hell. He multiplied. He used the wealth, but he multiplied the wealth, but never used the wealth for the akhirat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask, he will be asked, and we'll come to the hadith shortly, mentioning of those such people, in which Rasulullah tells of those people who will hoard their wealth. One is to hoard wealth, and one is to have wealth, and has it as riya and shoe. So there are two conditions of wealth which we'll come to, but this one of the conditions is hoarding. When hoarding is done, hadith found in Tirmidhi tells us of this. When someone hoards wealth, the condition is that that wealth has no benefit for them in the hereafter. We can never... Say to ourselves, well, we want this, we want this, we have four this, we have five of that. And we can never give up one thing for the pleasure of Allah. We can never give. Remember, there is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take us into account for our wealth. To us in this world, it says halal. Once you pay zakat, it's halal. Yes, it's halal. No problem, it's halal. It's pure wealth when you pay zakat on it. But is that the objective of wealth? Is that the objective of wealth? Likewise, a person who is given health and he utilizes that health and he prays his five times daily salah, which is obligatory upon him. Is that all he has to do with his health? Someone who needs his help, his parents, his wife, his children, who needs his physical help, he said, no, I just need my help to, help to pray. You think he has fulfilled the condition of health? On the day of Qiyamah, he will be questioned about his family. And Allah had given him health. What did he do with it? So this day of when Jahannam is being called to take from the flock of people and the group of people on that Maidan. And the questions have been asked amongst them as those who will hoard. Amongst them who has this position of wealth and yet has never utilized that wealth. And we are not talking about being filthy rich here, we're talking about being well enough that even if someone calls on us to give something, not big money, small money, something small, something little, give it. Give it for the pleasure of Allah. Not just zakat. Zakat is not when you're giving. Zakat is only an obligation. Giving comes beyond zakat. That's when you start to do charity. That's when you really start to spend wealth. Before that, you're only fulfilling an obligation. To purify your wealth so you could have halal food to eat. So you could take care of your family with halal means. You're now working halal system. But you're not giving charity yet. And this is what we're talking about. Hoarding from that portion. That portion of wealth. Because if you even hoard the zakat, then everything becomes haram. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about hoarding from what is permissible now. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whose house in this world has, who has a house? A dunya darun man la darun lahu. He says this dunya is for a person whose house 
he has no house in this world, in the hereafter. And whose wealth in this world has no wealth who collects from this world except he who has no wisdom at all. Who would collect wealth? Hadith of Prophet Well, malu for one who has no wealth in the hereafter. A person who uses this world as his home, who makes this dunya his home, then he has no home in the hereafter. A person who takes to himself that his wealth is this world and he does not think of the wealth that he has to have for the life of the hereafter. Then indeed that person, he has lost the direction of what is true, a true home and what is true wealth. If we cannot build our home in Jannah and we only concentrate on the amount of effort we make for the home of this world, how much more effort we have to make for the home of the hereafter? If we have to make effort on wealth and how much effort we make on the wealth of this world, how many trees we have built in paradise, how high is our home in Jannah, what is the elevation and the status of our home in Jannah, what are the palaces that we are building in paradise, what are the pearls and the rubies, what about the horrors of Jannah, what about the beauty of Jannah, what about the luxuries of going into the market of Jannah, that's the next topic by itself. But the topic that we're talking about is building that Jannah. It tells us here that a person who does not think about Jannah in the next life, then where is he building for? What are you building for if you don't have nothing to collect in the life of the hereafter? A person who has nothing to collect in the life of the hereafter, what does he, what does he end up with? He is muffless, he's bankrupt. He's empty. And a bankrupt person, what happens? In this world, if you are bankrupt, you own every property and you end up bankrupt. What the bank does? Even the well that you were so flaunting with, they take it and go. You think you could stay in that house one more day? You could enjoy one more comfort? Nothing. Nothing of this world you could enjoy. So it's muffly, son. It's gone. Jahannam will be such that it will grab the remaining of everything that you own in this world. If you have not made paradise your home, then the next object is that you become bankrupt. Become bankrupt. May Allah SWT save us from such a condition. The reigns of Jahannam and the hell, the angels that pull the reins, and we mentioned there are 70,000. Hazrat ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala reports, page 54, says that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that day Jahannam, the hell, will be pulled by 70,000 angels appointed to each 70,000 reign. So 70 by 70. Hadith found in Sahih, Muslim. The snakes and the scorpions of Jahannam. We have them in this world, in this dunya. And most of us will have a fear for these things. In this life, even if you get come close to being sting, you'll feel you get sting. And if you are sting, you feel like you're going to die. Because this is the what? The fear that we have from one little serpent in this Jahannam in this world, that it, we can't even compare to what it's like. One drop of it, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily there is a long neck, camel-like snake in Jahannam. If any one of these smite at a Jahannami, a person of hell, he will feel pain for 40 years. Not one day, not one hour you go to the hospital and you get an injection, you pass the pain, or two or three hours or a half day. 40 years from one bite. This is the condition of one of the serpents. Then it says, if any one of these things, a Jahannami person of hell, he will feel that pain for 40 years. Hadith found in Surah in, by Sahih Ahmad in his collection of hadith. Then, Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, He says, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ زِدْنَاهُمْ عَذَابًا فَوْقَ الْعَذَابِ بِمَا كَانُوا 
yufsidun. He says for them, Allah will add chastisement upon chastisement because they spread mischief. A quality of the people who will be smited by the serpents of Jahannam. Those who create mischief. Those who cause yufsiduna. Those unbelievers who would cause those people to deviate from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who would wage war against the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these serpents as part of his destruction for them. لا يتفرّ عنهم وهم فيه مبلسون and neither will death, death come to the Jahannam. No death will be there ever be in Jahannam for them as well. So the Holy Quran tells us about it. It says, No way will the punishment be lightened for them. And a despair, no, or any despair, they will be there overwhelmed. In Surah Al-Kaf, sorry, Surah Zukhraf, Surah 43, verse 75. And continue to mention, he says, no term shall be determined for them. In other words, they have no 10 years, 200 years, 500 years. There is no fixed term or limit for them. So they should die and then the punishment is over. Or shall its chastisement be what? Lightened for them. For the first 50 years, they have a light time. You know, continuously the same level of punishment. Surah Al-Fatir, Surah 35, verse 36. So there is no death in Jahannam. A person will be punished to the extent that they feel that death is upon them. And then the cycle starts all over again. You come close to the point of feeling death. But it's not death. It's just only the point where you restart the punishment. This is what is the fear of Jahannam. So they wish to die. They will wish there is an end to this. And that they could do away with all of this. But this is the condition of Jahannam that there is no end to it. So we are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the above verses, meaning that one will die due to torments of the Jahannam. No one will die due to the torments of Jahannam, but they will remain alive despite endless punishments. According to the hadith, when the dwellers of Jahannam, Jannah paradise, will go to Jannah, Paradise and the dwellers of Jahannam, the Jahannamis will go, the people of hell will go to Jahannam, hell, death will be brought in the shape of a ram. Thereafter, a proclaimer will proclaim, O Jannatis, people of paradise, now there will be no death. O Jahannami, people of hell, now there will be no death. On hearing this call, the Jannatis, people of paradise, will be delighted and the Jahannami people will become more depressed. Hadith found in Bukhari and Muslim. So, this will be the condition. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَهُمْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمْ لَا يُقْضَى عَلَيْهِمْ فَيَمُوتُوا وَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمْ مِنْ عَنْ عَذَابِهَا That the people of Jahannam, they will never, their punishment will never be lightened and no death will ever come to them. This is the condition that one will face at this point in time. What is the Jahannam? We're only talking about those who are facing the serpents of Jahannam. Now, there's a group of people in Jahannam who will be in the well of grief. The well of grief in Jahannam. al jubbul Huzn. The well of grief in Jahannam. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu he narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jahannam, the hellfire, seek refuge from Jabbul Huzn, the well of hell, within hell, at least 400 times a day. And this is in Jahannam, in itself, because of the nature of this well. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked, what is this Jabal Huzm? So if it's so scary, even Jahannam is seeking refuge from it. How? What is so scary about it? Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, it's a valley in hell, which is from, called Jubbul Huzn. 
the well of sadness and grief. And he continued and mentioned, he said, from which hell seeks refuge from at least that 400 times a day, it is prepared for the reciters from which of the Holy Quran. It is prepared for the reciters of the Holy Quran who are in a state of that state of becoming wealthy by Quran. In other words, they use Quran as a means of gaining wealth. They use Quran as a means of being haughty and proud by it. Quran. Gaining that false honor from people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah mentioned, he says, those are the most detested ones, those who wish to be seen by the chiefs and the leaders by their Quran. To be recognized by Quran by fame. And this doesn't mean a person cannot recite Quran or encourage other people to recite Quran. And this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the aspect of a person using it by their intention. And the hadith will come to us, tells us a person who would recite Quran. And Allah said, no, you didn't do this for what? For my pleasure. You do it for next purpose. Like this, that individual, Jubbul Huzn. Jahannam has a place for them. Quran is beautiful. Quran is beneficial. Quran is the most important part of the life of a believer. We use it for guidance. We use it for spiritual upliftment. We use it for nur. We use it for adhkar. We use it for indar. We use it for basharat. We use it for so many things. For warning, for encouraging, for giving glad tidings. We use it for reading to get blessings. We use it for light. So many rewards in Quran. But if you only use it, for the purpose of gain. We use it for the purpose of becoming recognized by people. Oh, he's so good because of Quran. And he himself feels he's the best. Then he's only making himself reach Jubbul Huzn. Jahannam. Humility must come out of Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the best of Quran example you can find. What was his life? Humility. No one. The best of alim, the best person who could learn Quran, he cannot have that level of arrogance. He cannot feel that he's too good for the people or he cannot feel that he's better than everyone else because of Quran. Allah has something prepared and waiting. Allah has something prepared and waiting in Jahannam for such people. Because Quran is to make us humble, not to bring pride in our hearts. Not to make us feel that we are too good. We are never too good. Rasulullah is the perfect example for us. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, they were all people of Ahlul Quran, who are Hufaz of Quran, who had Quran in their life. But what were their lives? Of humility. Of submitting before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when we learn Quran, it's not to become famous. It's for us to submit to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For us to submit that we are insignificant and recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we are nothing. That we are nothing. If Quran makes us something that we are not, in other words, we think that we are, then be mindful of this. Jahannam has a place waiting for such people. Therefore, our ilm, our knowledge, and even the things that we argue over and fight over with Quran, be careful of what we say when we talk Quran. Because it's the words of Allah. And if we defy or go contrary to it and think to ourselves, you know, well, I know and I'm telling you that this is the right thing. And you know, everybody reading the same Quran and argue by the same Quran and the same thing. Where do we want to end up? Where would we end if we continue on this fight? Allah has a place prepared. Not that there is no bath and discussion. Not that a person cannot disagree. But there should never be dissension and separation because of Quran. Because that separates us between Jannah and Jahannam. There is a connection with that Quran. So, Jubbul Huz. To the dwellers, it tells us now, the call of the Jahannam and the hell. 
yawma yaqulu li jannah ham li jahannam hal limtila wa taqulu hal min mazid Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy Quran the day when jahannam hell will be asked the question taqulu li jahannam hal limtila are you filled are you filled jahannam taqulu hal mazid is there any more to come he asks is there any more to come you know it is like we would say in our local term he answers the question with a question and it's not we how you usually respond to a question but jahannam answers is there any more to come meaning to say clearly that it is never filled and it will never be filled and he doesn't just say this but he says this with a level of what you know not boast as you would say but it's as though he is ready and waiting for more you already shake me yet you know what jahannam is saying you already shake me yet i'm still ready i'm waiting so halmim mazid and he says is there any more to come surah al-qaf surah 50 verse 30 it is stated by the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the jahannamis the people of hell will continually be flung into jahannam hell and despite being filled to the brim it will demand more in the end allah almighty will put his leg into it and it will get satisfied in other words he stops and say look if that's enough i had more to give you to quell jahannam this is what allah would do just say what you know you didn't mash something and give me the trouble put a little end on it just like that he rests his feet there said that's enough there's nothing more to come that's how he will satisfy jahannam so the jahannam this is the question how many more people have always mentioned this joke you know well hell will be full paradise full still have room hell what is the condition of hell hell will always say it have more room come come it's well called welcome in a way of punishment and adab i am ready and prepared to dish out what is before you is there any salvation from this punishment one starts to go to jahannam what is the condition is he going to come out of jahannam from any point in time in spite of being what penitent and you know making a lot of toba yawma yadu'u ila nari jahannam da'a that those on that day who will make dua to jahannam and begging jahannam to release them it is a pattern of the worldly life that one receives some comfort after enduring patience but as for the torment of jahannam and hell you know in this life with bl patient they tell people don't worry man i go pass that little hard time you go to now don't worry after that you'll get over jahannam you have all the patience you want continue taking patience that is stopping what the punishment this is the condition of jahannam burn you there in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same it is to you whether you bear it with patience or not yet but receive the recompense of your own actions this is the condition inna yastaghithu yughathu bima in yashwil wujud the condition now is after this they are in there they are begging to ease allah says no now it's time for food and drink now you're hungry now you're feeling pain allah willing to give you food and drink in jahannam so you feel you haven't patience and you're going to endure and you're hungry you're thirsty allah has food and drink for jahannam too so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the food and the drink of jahannam tons of fire as food and drinks for the jahannami the people of hell inna yastaghithu yughathu bima in yashwil wujub ba'sa ashrab that this certainly yastaghithu yughathu bima in that such a drink will be brought towards their faces the smell they wouldn't want it the heat of it they don't want to come close to them but yet it's brought close to their nostrils 
their cup, their skull, the skin over their skull will melt and fall into the cup. The condition of the drink, the smell of it, the heat of it will melt their cups, it will fall into the cup. Yashwil wujwa bi'sal asharab. Asharab. What a evil drink. In other words, you say, what a terrible drink. Nothing in this world could do such by a drink. But yet the drink of Jahannam will melt their skin on their face and their head. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in this pattern of this drink, it says, the Holy Quran mentions again too as well, it says, then will they be given to drink of boiling hot spring, no food will there be except of what Allah says, from them but a bitter dari, which you call, of that food, which will neither nourish nor satisfy their hunger. You eat, but you get what? Satisfaction. Only more pain. Such a condition, Quran mentions, That what is this dari and this thorn tree, which is of this poisonous nature, that even the animals stay away from it. If they eat it, they die immediately. Even of a plant of this world that is poisonous. But of the Jahannam, people would eat this and it will destroy their entire stomach on this side. That such a condition of the consumption of this, when you swallow this, it goes into your stomach, the entire stomach melts. It's Intestines, everything just drops off from just eating of this food. Quran says, No friend have you there in this day, nor will you have any food except of the foul pus from the washing of the wounds, which no one, none do eat but those in sin. Surah 35, Surah Fatir 36 to 37. He says, shajarata zakum to amul afim, kal muhli yaglil fil butun, kal hamim. So verily, the tree of Zakum is the next food of Jahannam. Will be the food of the sinful, like molten brass. This food, like molten brass, it will be boiled in their insides, like the boiling of scalding, scalding water, or scalding water, as you see. Surah Dukhan, verse 44 to 45, 43, 44, 45. As for you, the sinners, who deny the truth, you will be sure it taste the tree of Zakum. Then will you fill your inside therein with a drink boiling water on top of it. Indeed, you shall drink like deceased camels raging with thirst. Such will be their fate on the day of requital. Quran verse 56, 51, 56. Many description of the foods of Jahannam. The foods of Jahannam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the nature of these foods and the condition that it will be for them. Who could withstand eating anything that is bad in this world? If you want something to eat in this dunya, you want the best. Even the poor person who could, could barely afford food would look for something that is what? Best in taste that they can afford to eat. And the person on the sides of the street, they will still look for food, even if they get a piece of something and they have to choose, they'll choose the best of all the scrap that they have. But they still choose. Jahannam, there is no choice. Of all the drainings of the pus, the valley that collects it, the pus of the molten flesh collects and then pour into these vats that they will drink from. This is the condition of the drinks of Jahannam. That it will melt every aspect for one who will enter into Jahannam and have to use these foods and these drinks. For it is the tree that springs out of the bottom of Jahannam, as Zakum. It grows in Jahannam. So Jahannam, this tree grows in there. So imagine if Jahannam is of this nature 
and the tree is at the bottom of Jahannam and it springs its leaves and its food for the Jahannamis. What a tree in Jahannam. What type of tree could one imagine that is in such a fire, with such a heat, that someone can eat from such a tree in Jahannam? It is even beyond our imagination to even think what a tree that could even be. We can't even think of it. We can't even look at a tree of fire in this world and say it is like fire. We don't even, even know the condition of that. So this Allah describes to us. For it is a tree that springs out of the Jahannam, Surah Safat, Surah 37, verse 64 to 65. Inna ha takruju fiha aslil jahim. Quran, Allah SWT mentions us in that ayat, Surah 37, verse 64 to 65. Read it, you would see. Allah says the tree that grows out of Jahim, out of the Jahannam. Zakum is a famous tree which is dreadfully bitter and its bitterness of the tree of Jahannam, the hell, is beyond comparison. No way could even think of comparing it. The horrible odor will emanate when they eat from it. That the tree and on top of that they will drink boiling water like thirsty camels. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, if a bucket of that ghassaq is dropped into the world, the people of the entire world will rot. If one bucket of this just falls into this dunya, everything will rot. Hadith found in Tirmidhi. What is the ghassaq? Scholars have explained. It is the foul pus of the Jahannam people of hell. And it's tears of the Jahannam people, the people of hell. It means the punishment that is what? Of that nature's bite for them. It is the condition of Jahannam, which we will stop by. That you in Jahannam and the nature of what people will face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. There's just a couple more pages and it's a bit on the line of, you know, that we should, as I say at the beginning, we should be mindful. That is not a scare, but for Muslims, this is, as you say, the Sahabas, the reality of Jannah and Jahannam was before them, full yaqeen. Jahannam was meant to keep them away from everything that is wrong, that they will never do such an action. That will lead them to Jahannam. Today we have people who are amongst ourselves, we know, and we would see from amongst our own selves and our own family and our own homes, the condition of people leading their lives without the fear of Jahannam in them. Without the fear of Jahannam in them, if we even examine our own homes, if we want to check how many people are praying salah within our own home, far us to check the entire community or entire neighborhood. Check in our own home. What is the condition of such a person who is living in my own house and they are not performing their salah? What we expect of the Jahannam that is waiting? What do we expect of the Jahannam that is waiting? And we are believers, and we are to be conscious in our own homes to save, as we are told by Allah. Ku anfusakum wa likum nara. Save yourself and save your family from Jahannam. The description of Jahannam. The description of Jahannam. Allah is begging us to save yourself and save your family. This is as much as we have. Look at who are in our home and see if they are really obeying the commands of Allah. Our discussion on this topic is not to scare us or to run us away, but it is only to make us develop that piety, that taqwa, that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to refrain and refrain. It is not an easy task. It's not something we could just lock off all bodies. It will be a wishful thinking because shaitan is not going to give you that easy, up, easy, easy way get away. That no, my life will change. It is easy to say, but to live that life is a different thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that protection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us and forgive us for our shortcomings and save us from the Jahannam. And all times we should always have after our salah, Salat al-Fajr, Maghrib, at least before we start speech with anyone, we should always make that tasbih, Allahumma ajirni mina nar, Allahumma ajirni mina nar, Allahumma ajirni mina nar, at least seven times for the benefit of ourselves being saved from the fire of Jahannam. Let's make dua, inshallah. Allahumma ameen.
اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك هذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين إني ألقى الإيناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات